With the release of Grand Theft Auto V, mere hours away now, we're taking a look back at the history and the impact of the Grand Theft Auto series. Now, last week on EP Daily, we took a look at Grand Theft Auto III in 2001 and Vice City in 2002, both of which would go on to sell 14.5 and 17.5 million units, respectively. So where exactly does Rockstar go from here? Hey, don't That's sweat it. In 2004, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas for the Xbox, PS2, and PC shifted the action to a fictional version of Southern California in the 90s called San Andreas, which represented the best and worst of San Francisco and Los Angeles. Appreciate that. Thanks. More celebrities lined up for this one, including Peter Fonda, Chris Penn, Ice-T, and David Cross. The Guinness Book of World Records has San Andreas listed as the largest ever voice cast in a game, weighing in at a ridiculous 861. Better drop by and see Sweet. He's been yapping on about that graffiti too. Later, homie. Like Vice City, the San Andreas soundtrack was beyond ambitious. Tupac, James Brown, Cypress Hill, Creedence Clearwater Revival, and Foghat, and even Merle Haggard somehow all existed side by side in the San Andreas universe. Once again, Rockstar seemed to be showing off. The virtual world of San Andreas was huge, six times as large as Vice City, and you could do anything. <laughs> Now, you could even have a girlfriend in the game, and I can personally attest to the fact that it's a lot easier to have one in the game than it is to have one in real life. The game also unfortunately became known for Hot Coffee, a sex mini game that was officially edited out of the final version, but which lusty computer nerds discovered hidden in the game's code. This game had everything. There was supposedly even a Bigfoot wandering the game's virtual foothills. Unfortunately, San Andreas also proved to be kind of a tipping point for me. Personally, I abandoned the game about halfway through, and it would begin the sad, sorry trend of me not finishing Grand Theft Auto games. Pathetic, I know. We are all looking for that special someone. GTA 4 arrived in 2008. Instead of heading into the future or into outer space, Rockstar took the series back to its roots, presenting gamers with a far more detailed, much more sprawling version of where the revolution began way back in 2001, Liberty City. No more killing. The story this time is centered around an Eastern European immigrant named Nico Bellic. The game incorporated moral choices which impacted the game's ending, which, full disclosure, I never saw. The game was the first next-gen version of GTA, and it looked the part with rich, almost painterly visuals. Everything crashed back there. Though gamers quibbled about the touchy driving controls, GTA 4 included a first, multiplayer, letting up to 16 players gather online in Liberty City to enjoy some group mayhem and wilding. So what does the future hold for GTA 5? Will it trump the success of GTA 4? And more importantly, will I finally finish a GTA game for the first time since 2002? The first GTA game in five years, the longest development time of any game in this series, features three criminals, which gamers switch between as they work their way through the single-player experience. The setting for the game is the sprawling Southern California-like burg of Los Santos, which features the Beverly Hills-like Rockford Hills, the Venice Beach-like Vespucci Beach, and multiplayer is also back and bigger and better than ever. At long last, we'll all finally find out tomorrow when GTA 5 hits game stores, but if history has taught us anything, it's that Rockstar will deliver more than a game. They'll deliver a technical marvel, an ambitious entertainment, and a game that gamers and non-gamers alike will have to have.